This is our record before Jackson was heading forth, something I'd been suggesting Billy do since spring training. And this is our record after. So, George, are you saying Billy's not responsible for the club's successes? This is our record before Jackson was heading forth, and this is our record after. The winner of the runoff primary for the Democratic nomination was Ed Koch, a nine-year veteran of Congress whose campaign co-chairman was former Miss America Bess Meyerson. Koch also had support from the city's current mayor, Abraham Beam, who'd been defeated in the first round voting earlier this month. Koch had this to say. When we started the campaign, no one thought we could win. We had only the people, and that's all that ever counts. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The man Koch beat is New York's Secretary of State, Mario Cuomo, who had the backing of New York Governor Hugh Carey. And despite the loss for the Democratic nomination, Cuomo is still supposed to be on the ballot in November as the candidate of the Liberal Party here. Let's see you go, 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 go. The Yankees' magic number was reduced to one despite a positive loss to the Detroit Tigers. Any combination of a loss and loss or a New York win in any of the last three games of the regular season will clinch the division for the Bombers. The Yanks clinch the AL East title today when the Orioles' Eddie Murray had two home runs for the Baltimore to an 8-7 win over the Boston Red Sox. Pulling your head out, Reg. Keep it still. You're flying open. All right. Huh? Extend through the zone. Give me one low and away. Billy! Atta boy. Get a word? Reg's looking sharp. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he turning his wrists over a bit? No. Listen, my friend, I'm not going to negotiate with you in the press. What? Uh, I think it's a must for George to come up with a new contract. If he didn't, I have to think seriously about talking to the other clubs. I didn't say that. Oh, misquote? Look, George, I've got obligations. I've got two families to support, and i got to do right by them. Of course you do. I'm not going to talk numbers with you, George. I know you're a good businessman. Just seems like it'd be good for business to take care of your key people. Make sure they're happy. Meaning you. Mm-hmm. Meaning me. I see. Let me explain a little something about how I do business. I don't really involve myself in my employees' personal lives, unless it affects the organization. Your obligations, Billy, they're, uh, they're your obligations. I didn't create them. First place, George. Two years in a row. You can't do better than first. I'm only asking for what's right. Fair enough. You concentrate on Kansas City. You beat them. I promise we'll sit down and talk. But let me explain a little something else about the way I do business. Nobody is indispensable. Not even in success. If he buys $50 million worth of players, I'll beat him with another club, and he knows it. I'll make him cry. How I spend my money's my own business. And if he wants to play this thing out in the press, he's crazy. He's only taking credit from his own players. It's disgusting. The front office always gets smarter the second year. Amazing how brilliant I get. Game one of the playoffs starts tomorrow, George. Is Billy Martin going to get fired, win or lose?
We'll have to wait and see. The commercialization of the Son of Sam is already well underway. Philip Peltz, a lawyer for Berkowitz, is accused of trying to sell tape recordings he made with Berkowitz for up to $100,000. Daily News columnist Jimmy Breslin, who once got a letter from the presumed killer, and NBC's Dick Schaap are writing a novel about the killings. They've been advanced more than $100,000. Sam Carr, an older man who may have unwittingly served in the killer's mind as the inspiration for the Sam in Son of Sam, is offering his story for $20,000. So far, nobody wants it. Pictures were published today of Berkowitz's apartment in Yonkers, sold by a 13-year-old who managed to get inside. An old girlfriend of Berkowitz did manage to sell some letters he wrote her to the New York Daily News for $200. The New York Post paid $500 for the same letters and published them this afternoon with the headline, How I Became a Mass Killer by David Berkowitz. Hello, everybody. This is Ernie Harwell, along with Ned Martin. It'll be a battle of left-handers here in the first game of the playoff series. Don Gullett on the mound for the Yankees. Paul Splitoff will be the pitcher for the Kansas City Royals. Now, the Yankees are now taking the field. As Eddie said, a perfect day for baseball, and wouldn't it be nice if all golden Octobers were this way? Freddie Pacek. Shortest man in the majors is billed and always will be, I guess, at 5-4. High, and he walks on four pitches. Freddie Pacek. Gullet doesn't have a stuff. He'll be okay. Or on this stage, any day you have a bad day, it's a bad day to have a bad day. Al McCray, the designated hitter, batting 298. Come on, Don! Settle down, Don! What's the word on Don Gullett? We don't know. His wing's been bothering him for weeks, Maury. Just, we don't know. Ask the man yeah, when he comes out. Gullett's out for the series. You know, I'm going tore up. W will, will he be back for the next one? What? The, the next series. The next what? Series. The World Series? Did you see the same game we saw today, Maury? We'll be lucky if we don't get swept. My rotation just went down the sewer. Go ahead. Smart, Spike. Huh? You had to ask him that? Gullet's out. What? How long? Don't know. Art Fowler, huh? I thought we brought in a drinking buddy to keep the guys healthy. That's what I thought. Today's a mockery, Gabe, a combined one for 12. Pinella, Nettles, and Jackson. What kind of operation are we running here? I'm disgusted! Yeah, she is. The dark haired one. The one on the left. The one with the hairband? What do you think she is, Reg? 18? Reggie. Excuse me. Can I get an autograph? It's for my kid. <laughs> nice. You're gonna get him tomorrow, right? You gotta love New York. Every word of encouragement is a threat. I can hear him already, you know. Hear what? The I told you so's. Because you went hitless 0 for 4? Come on, it happens to the best of them. Yeah, but when it happens to me here, you know, it goes national and everybody's a critic. Couple of dingers in the upper deck, my man. They'll all be forgotten about. It's not that easy, you know? Here it is. That's the beauty of being a ball player. 
You can shape your own destiny. One swing and a bat could change everything. It's all in your hands. Who else could say that? Three million dollars I'm paying the man. He can't buy a hit when it counts. One game, George. One game in a five-game series in a home game. I swear, Gabe, they're not responding to Billy the way they used to. They're just not. I know it. You know what my wife says to me this morning? She's been after me to go to North Carolina Saturday, day game four. You know, my, my kids' parents' visiting day. This morning, she says to me, I don't think you ought to worry about missing that game because the way we're playing probably won't be a game four to go to. My wife, Gabe. Look, George, we've got the arms and the offense. Leonard's tough, but he can be taken. Gura's suspect. What is it, 40 years, Gabe? 40 years in baseball and no ring? I got news for you, my friend. I'm not waiting that long. The South Bronx got a surprise visitor this morning. The drama of a decaying New York neighborhood drew President Carter away from the drama of his international peacemaking. 100 blocks north of UN headquarters, the president's limousine cruised unannounced for more than an hour through streets crumbling from neglect. The people of the South Bronx gaped in half disbelief and called out, hey, Jimmy, send us money, give me a job. The president walked with an air of confidence and satisfaction, fresh from a long night that had brought significant encouragement for a Middle East peace. He found encouragement along Washington Avenue, where people like Ramon Diaz had turned federal subsidies and job training programs into a livable neighborhood. The landscape was not so encouraging at the corner of Boston Road and Charlotte Street, but the president was envisioning playgrounds in the rubble of New York. I've been pleased at some things. As we passed the high-rise apartments a few blocks back, it was obvious that in the midst of uh, devastation and blight and deterioration, they're holding their own. The people seem to be very proud of them. They've, uh, they've not uh, had uh, vandalism or graffiti uh, damage. The little park area there was well used by the children. And it's just like an oasis in the midst of, uh, of a desert. What does he know about Yankee pride? What Yankee team has he ever played on? All he's ever done is sit on his ass in the stands and second guess people to death. Let's go out there and kick some royal ass. Let's go! Let's go! Get your heads into the game, go on! Come on! Come on! Get your heads into the game! Come on! Against the left-handed pitcher tonight has hit the ball hard twice. He has slid deep to center field, sending Rivers well back. One, two, pitch. Ground ball left side over to second base, and there's a takeout ball is ground. The throw home is not made. Bill's orange! And now Billy Martin is going to go out and screen a little bit at second base. Randolph's career with a slide like that. He got to injure my guy. You heard Willie? Good slide. That was a clean slide. Clean slide, my ass. He could have broken Randolph's leg. Randolph was already past the base. It was six feet. There was an ending, ending double play. You see him, Marty. Is that the way you could have let him play, Marty? Dirty like that, huh? It pushed. It was pushed. Push, Marty. Marty. Right, Skip. You give him heck. Way to go, Billy. Way to go. That's right. He barreled into him. He intentional. Damage the rules. You toss a guy for that money. You toss him. When I play, a guy slides into me like that, he get a face full of spikes and a beam to go in and he don't do it again. You made your point, Billy. My point? What the hell are you talking about, my point? You don't even know what my point is. So what is your point? I'll tell you what my point is. We got a tie game, a run they should have never scored. Am I right? Am I right? He's right here. Right here. Right here. That is my point, Marty. And my guys are asleep. That's my point. I'm going to let a fire under my team. Hey, 
Because I come out here and I wave my arms like Tony Parkins and fear strikes out. And you know what people are going to think? They think you're nuts, Billy. Hell yeah, I want them to think I'm nuts. I am trying to light a fire under my guy's body, turn it with a damn ball game, and I want to kick dirt on you so bad, but I know if I do, I'm gone. Are you through, Billy? Me? More than me? I am never through. Shallow. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. You won for eight first two games, Reg. How's that make you feel? Yeah, I'm gonna hit more. My time is just a little bit off, that's all. But it'll come around. Wait and see. The ALCS moves to Kansas City with the Yankees left-handed power hitters continuing to struggle. Reggie Jackson, Chris Chambliss, and Greg Nettles are a combined two for 21. And here go the Royals. Reggie Jackson will lead it off. Capacity crowd on hand here. First two ball games, the Kansas City pitching staff is pretty well strapped. Reggie Jackson and Nettles, as you mentioned earlier, Joe, but they're facing right-handers now. Okay, if he jams, then Porter's got a ball he can make a play on. He does. What's that making? Reggie, 0 for 2. No, I mean for the playoffs. One for 11. throws me that slider, I beat it into the dirt three times. Three times. Well, it happens, though. Not this time of year. Right. I don't want to see anyone stuff in their faces.
Okay, Billy, you came close with Minnesota and Detroit. You've managed two full seasons, won two divisions, but you've never won the big one. Okay. Steve, so, wait, Bill. This is Steve. We're not going there. Please, it's all right. Let me ask the men a question. Are you feeling any extra pressure to win tomorrow? Like your job could be on the line? Like you could be fired? You know, Steve, you scrounge around the you wanna, clubhouse. You, know, you want us to go? You don't care if you hurt people, if you get them fired That's or treated, true. as long as they make a good story, as long as you can use them. That's not true. How many times have you ripped me? Hmm? You know what? I think you're paranoid. I'm really? paranoid? Yeah, you're paranoid. paranoid. I don't have to be paranoid to see you're a prick. I'm a prick. That's right, you're yeah, a prick. I'm, a prick. I'm doing my job. There he is, right? I would never take away a man's right to earn a living, but you're not welcome in my office. You come in here again, and I'll put you in a damn whirlpool. We got ourselves a superstar. These guys, the Royals, they ain't got no superstar. They just do what they have to to win. Well, if Reggie's not hitting, you think it's his fault? Didn't say that. Concerned? Of course I'm concerned, but we gotta keep fighting. Keep battling low. We're not dead yet. Okay, George. Chin up, Buck. Look alive. Thanks, okay, boss. George. Move your heart. See, I think it's very important to them to see me in here. You know, they gotta know they're not alone in the foxhole, especially when we're losing. Our problem, of course, right now is that our sluggers aren't hitting. It's killing us. They got to perform. It's what I pay them for, or else we die. Am I right, Gabe? Can't argue with that, George. All right, let's go see what Mr. Randolph has to say. The boss is right. OK, he's paying me a lot of money, and I am not doing the job. I'm not. I mean, hey, I'm the big man. We all know that. I know that. It's my job to clean up the table. Lest we forget, though, that table does need to be set before I get there, all right? You can't have a feast if the only thing on the menu is ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got to have that first course, little dinner salad. Now, that'd be Mickey Rivers and Woody Randolph's job. All right, then you got that second course. That's Thurman and Chambliss and maybe a little third course of Greg Nettles. So that plate has got to be full before I ever step to it. It's awfully hard to clean up if there ain't nothing on the table. You know what I'm saying, Mom? You know what happens if we don't win too straight, right? We go hunting? They made it to the World Series last year without me. We lose this year, we don't even make it that far, and it's all my fault. It's not all your fault. Please, I'm one for please, 11, Fran. They brought me here to perform in the big games, and I'm one game away from ending their season. None of them wanted me here anyway, so for them, it's not all bad. They could just blame Richard Jackson. But for me, my year ends up a total waste, and I end up making George look a damn fool. No, 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 I'm at the hotel. I wouldn't go out after a night like that. You know that. You watch the game? Yeah, of course I did. It was bad for your back. I know. Richard? Yeah? If we uh, win this thing, uh, you and Billy Joe come up to New York, won't you? I don't know, maybe he, he don't want to. I'm not trying to force you or anything, but... Well, maybe it'd be nice if... I don't know. Just, I don't, I just... It's okay. We'll come. If you need us to come, we'll come. Okay, I promise. Good. That's real good. It's getting late now. You, you, you better get to bed. Me too. I gotta go. I'll talk to you soon.
Are you sure this is okay, honey? Yes, Daddy, it's okay. I, I don't want to disturb anyone. It's fine. And I certainly don't want to miss any of our important activities. Don't worry. We'll just take a quick walk. You guys don't mind if um, my dad watches, do you? First time, Brenda? You guys got the game on? <laughs> yeah, come in. Inning or two, right, honey? Just an inning or yeah. two. Any score? Uh, it just started. First inning. George. James. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Hey, I'm George. Hi, buddy. How are you? I'm good. This guy's all about control. <laughs> He's gonna be painting corners all day unless we can take the brush out of his hand. Uh -huh. I don't see how much control he has tonight. Well, you got a little plan? Hey, Larry! Larry Gora! How many men you gonna put on base today, Larry? Huh? 10, 12, 13? Why don't you put your whole family on base? Spineless choke artist, got no gut, Larry Gore. Whoa, Larry! Over the mound, Partek charges, grabs it, lifts the first, he is taking the first base. On the third goes Rivers. Larry! Larry, look over here, Larry. I'm so glad I let you go. Better than catfish hunting my ass. Mr. 27 outs, young man, 27 outs. Be right back, Daddy, okay? Where are you going, honey? I just gotta grab something in my room. Well, you hurry back now. We're on a schedule, okay, hon? Hey, Jamie, you got an extra soda pop for me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Otis goes, is a draft to left field, maybe foul, it is a fair ball. Off the right swings, is a draft to right center. It will be up the alley for a base hit. Round and third, he's And the gray takes a ball in close. Hey, Daddy, who's winning? Five, four Yanks, two outs in the fourth. Red Sox, New York's changing pitchers. Sparky Lyle in the fourth, and what the hell's he thinking? It's a terrible decision, a terrible idea. For getting him in way too early, what we call a bonehead move. Bonehead. How you feeling, Sparky? Huh? Good. You weren't chasing it last night, were you? Get us out of this. All right. Put one in Brett's ear if you have to. So you're gonna fire Martin if the Yankees lose? Just exactly which news outlet you're working for, my friend. That's awful early for Sparky, ain't it? He's the best arm I got. They gotta run now, we're dead. But what the hell am I saving him for, Art? I'm serious. So Martin's move paid off. Martin's move? Bringing in Lyle so early. Jamie, we had a four-run lead in the second. Martin squandered it. Brings in his best pitcher in the fourth. What if we need Sparky tomorrow? Huh? You ever think of that? 
The game is not as simple as it looks, fellas. Not as simple as it looks. You take care now. No, honey, can we hit the student union? They got an hors d'oeuvre party. Well, is Sparky being overused? Paul's arm gets tired and his slider gets more effective. People don't understand that. You can't overuse him in a short series. So you got a song. All right, Billy. Thank you. Tonight, Tonight. I was first base. I thought, you know, maybe he's going to catch this, no problem. But uh, I don't know if he lost it in the sun or what. But, you know, he's stumbling, he's stumbling, and boom! You know, he's right in front of him. I mean, hey, could he even caught that one? Well, you know, this is my fifth time in a do-or-die game, and, you know, I haven't lost one yet. You know, some guys, they fold under the pressure, but, uh, no, I dig it. When it's all on the line and you know you're gonna either cover yourself in glory or die trying, it's like something out of Shakespeare. You know? Ain't nothing like it. A game like tomorrow, a game five, I live for it. Reggie, I just think you're so great. Maybe you and I can go out and do something somewhere tonight. Maybe some other time, never before a big game. I'm gonna play Blair and Wright and bench Reggie. It's nothing personal, George. I got no beef with the man. I want to win this game as much as you guys do. Hell, I play Joe Goebbels if it helps us to win. He's not hitting. He's one for 14 in the series and two for 14 against split off. And you know what his glove's like. You can't compare him to Blair in the field. You asking me or you telling me? I have to do what's best for the team. You're the manager, Billy. It's your decision. I made my mind up. Prepared to take the heat if you're wrong? Comes with a job. Comes with a job. Good luck. Thank you. What do you think? Stats don't lie, George. Split off owns Jackson. No question, Martin is a troubled guy. We took a hell of a risk when we hired him in the first place. When it comes to managing a ball club in a crucial game, I trust him. Hey! Tell me something. Can Reggie hit split off? Not with the paddle. Billy? You want to talk to me? Yeah, I did. I wanted to uh, ask you a favor. Did somebody die or something? What's this about? I ain't starting Reggie tonight. Whoa. I want you to tell him. I'm not telling him. You're the manager, you tell him. Have, have Yogi tell him. He won't. I can't believe this. You decide to sit Reggie tonight, you know how he's gonna react. You don't have the balls to tell him yourself? Last time I talked to the man, it was a worthless exercise. Just tell him I'll play him in the series. What if we don't make it to the series? I don't wanna fight with the man, Healy. He's your friend. It's the best way. Reggie. Hey, friend. Listen, I got something important to tell you, and you got about 30 seconds to get used to it. What are you talking about? You're not playing tonight. What? Martin sent me to tell you. He's benching you. Now, look, you got a couple choices. Cosell's waiting to interview you. You can go out there, you can rip Billy, rip George, rip the Yankees on national television, or you can do the last thing I know you want to do, which is suck it up, lie through your teeth, and tell Howard it's for the good of the team and you're all right with it. If it's any consolation, and it's not much, Martin promises you'll play every game in the series. If it was me, I would take the high road, but you know, you're not me and it's your call. Does George know? He must. And Martin's not going to pull this without telling him. Not with the series on the line. Hi, 
I didn't do it. It ain't my damn fault. Man don't want to give me my money, then I ain't gonna play that. What? My old lady spending my money again. Run up the hotel bill, room service and whatnot. How am I supposed to pay? What are you talking about, man? Gay Paul, what I'm talking about. I went up there to ask him for an advance on my money. No, no, it wasn't the first time, it wasn't even the second time. But the point is, I don't get that bread, I can't pay that bill. I can't pay that bill, I don't play. See what he do when he got Mick the Mouse out there instead of Mick the Quick. Mick, shut the hell up, get dressed, and play ball, OK? Go with Bird. Ready and ready. Well, Whitey Herzog's coming out, Frank. I don't know if uh, Herzog is going to allow Clintorf to pitch to Munster or not. He's got a couple of guys getting loose in his bullpen. That's perfect. match up all night. Let's see if I'm too smart for my own good. I would think Frank the Jackson would be more apt to, to bat for Johnson than Pinella. And I already uh, they've called Johnson back. And they're going to send Jackson up. Pinella will bat for himself. All right, Bill. Lewis double, routed out to third and fly to right. Here now, I don't think Herzog would hesitate uh, should he want to to go out and bring the left-hander in because after Jackson would be Nettles and Chambliss, both left-handed batters. So I think you'll let Bird go on a pitch to Jackson. And that's going to be a base hit. Randolph on his way to Otis throws into second base. All right, here's Reggie. Reggie Jackson batting for Cliff Johnson. Reggie did not start the ball game tonight because of his past history of not being able to hit the ball. And his problems with the outfield on the artificial turf. He took the benching very, very well. Out of the center field, Otis coming on, and he can't get to it. Otis got it. It's a big hey, hit. Kansas 
City is leading three to two. Everything boils down now to this top half of the ninth inning. Come on now, baby. Roy White is on deck. Blair's going again. Ball four. White walks, and the Yankees have runners at first and second. Oh, keep it alive, well, the keep Royals it think Rivers is going to butt. George Brett could almost shake hands with Mickey Rivers the way he's down the line. And the way this infield is set up is in close at first base. And it's through the right side. Two minutes in a row. If I was them, I'd tell me to a five. 